Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Crypto markets clearly heating up, and how do you know? Well, by looking at your screen right now, you can see Indiana Jones. He has found the green up arrow for crypto markets. It's an exciting time, right? You can see the thrill on his face. And uh, I'm going to share with you perspective from a couple analysts and uh, some additional evidence that the whales, they've really, uh, they, they've really got their process in place. They know exactly what they're doing. Well, all sorts of people have been panic selling. They've been accumulating and there are indications that we're going to be in up only season soon, as they call it. But look, the um, the lowest price for XRP this year was 57 cents. And it happened on January 24th this year, 2022. Now, today, XRP spiked at over 90 cents which is roughly the highest it's been all year, actually. And that's a 57% increase in the price of XRP in just over two months. And while it's great to see that, the interesting fact is that none of this matters. <laughs> like the, the price of XRP is just as volatile as history tells us it should be. So for now, it doesn't matter if the price goes up. I mean, I, I'm happy to see it, don't get me wrong but it doesn't matter if the price goes up and it also doesn't matter if the price goes down. All that matters is the answer to this simple question. Is XRP going to go parabolic ever again? Like we saw in late 2017 when it ran to almost $4, uh, it was starting at uh, you know around the 20 cent region in middle of December, 2017. Is it ever gonna do that again? An enterprise discovery? Because I have to tell you, all of the price action before that, frankly, doesn't matter. And I know it scares people, but it doesn't scare me. It really doesn't scare me. It's a known factor, the volatility is. And what would scare me is if that volatility stopped. So everybody's freaking out about volatility. I'm like, no, this is par for the course. If it stopped, I'd be like, what in the ever-loving hell is going on? Everybody else would be feeling calm and nice. I'd be like, no, 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 no. Something's on fire somewhere. Smell at that smoke. So there is a problem. So in that sense... I'm looking at this very differently from the typical retail speculator that, you know, makes purchasing decisions as a result of emotion. But uh, since my bet is that there will be parabolic price action for XRP leading to a new all-time high in price discovery, and I do believe that, um, absolutely nothing that happens before that actually matters to me. And it's, it's exciting to see the price go up, you know, fine, fine. Uh, it can be a little fun, especially if it's bigger jump than normal. But uh, just to be real with you, in the end, none of it matters either because either I'm right and it's going to go parabolic, which is the only thing that matters to me, or I'm wrong and it goes to zero, in which I don't know. I guess I'll cry myself to sleep or something. But <laughs> I also only invested what I'm willing to lose in case I'm wrong about all those. But uh, anyway, plenty to share with you uh, moving forward. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a, a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. Just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. As I record this, XRP is at 87 cents. Bitcoin's at $47,405. Market cap for the asset class, 2.16 trillion. And Bitcoin dominance at 41.57%. Ah, look at the look at this. You know, I'll just pull up Bitcoin. Actually, look at this. Bitcoin. This this is fantastic as far as I'm concerned. It it had a, a 24 hour high of forty eight thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars. Now, to me, this is where things uh, sooner than later are going to start to get really really interesting. Is the blockchain backer correct? And uh, we end up seeing Bitcoin never seen a new all time high until the, ne- the you know the next market cycle. Are we going to see a bear market now or? As the likes of Credible Crypto and Nicholas Merton and all sorts of others, correct, uh, and Love Crypto, are, are, are those types correct? And we've just been seeing consolidation over much of the last 12 months, actually. Uh, arguably for at least, you know, close to half a year. I, I understand that there's an all-time high, but still, like, much of the time spent, if you just look at it, it's, it looks like it's been ranging, the, the price action of Bitcoin. So the question is then, uh, who's right? Are we going to see the up action because the market's going to have to make a decision sooner or later. It's not going to sit here in purgatory forever. You know what I'm saying, folks? It's going to happen. So this is very exciting for me and hopefully for you, too. I've been so curious to see how this plays out. I still don't know for sure. I don't pretend to have the answer, but I'm tracking it. And I'm going to share with you what some people think. But first, uh, let's highlight this. Here's the Crypto Fear and Greed Index at 56 out of 100, indicating that the market is in greed. <gasps> Isn't it pleasant to see that? If you look last month, 
It was at 26 out of 100 indicating fear. And if you go back to January at some point, I think in January anyway, uh, it was at what, 10 or 11 out of 100 indicating extreme fear. But here we are at 56. It's people flying by the seat of their pants. Just whatever's happening in the moment. I feel those emotions and they probably sell accordingly. Uh, take a look at this tweet from, from Lev Crypto. <clears throat> I shared this one in a recent video. I'm going to share his uh, newer one, but I wanted to kind of set the table with this one first. This was from March 24th this year. Hashtag XRP. Still in its long-term consolidation. Nothing exciting, in my opinion, before the yellow parallel channel is broken, which is $1.50. Fireworks begin once the upper channel breaks, which he says is probably alt season. Uh, should Bitcoin print more weakness, alts would follow, and XRP risks another uh, fall down to 30 to 40 cents. Well, I'll tell you what, at least we haven't seen that to this point. But uh, as far as this, this, this channel that he's setting right here with these parallel yellow dotted lines, not yet broken up, despite it's, the fact that it's been fun to see uh, XRP jumping up to over 90 cents today. But where are we going? Well, I'll take a look at this. And if this isn't optimism, I don't know what the hell is. So this is from uh, Love Crypto. This is his newest tweet from, <clears throat> excuse me, from just a few hours ago, actually. Hashtag XRP. The current price action since late February usually leads to big and sharp spikes. And here's the chart that he shared with an overlay here with expectations showing uh, XRP, he's he's anticipating, heading up towards uh, that region he was talking about, $1.50. It's it, From his perspective, it seems like a virtual inevitability. And honestly, to me, it does seem like that too. Not that I, like, I don't know for sure. I'm not pretending to. I do have a crystal ball, but it's broken AF. So I'm not 100% sure. But <clears throat> it'd just be weird to me if the, the, the highest price for XRP that would ever happen for the entirety of the existence of mankind already happened. And it was on January 4th, 2018, when it hit whatever it was, three $3.92 according to Live Coin Watch. If that's really the highest, okay, fine. That would be very surprising to me. I, I just, I don't believe that's the case. I think it's going to be worth way more than that. I don't know how much, but uh, that's, that's my bet. That's what I'm looking here. Um, and then there was this from chart analyst Credible Crypto. <clears throat> and he writes... In all seriousness, the fifth, and he's talking about the fifth wave here in this market cycle. Here, I'll make this full screen, actually, while I'm reading this. In all seriousness, <clears throat> the fifth should be similar to the first and third in that once we get going, pullbacks will be shallow, and it will essentially be up only for a number of months. Not really a new paradigm, just the result of expansion after a year-long consolidation period. And so you can see what he's talking about here with this being wave one and then two back to the downside and then three to the upside, then to the downside, a lot of consolidation four, and then he's anticipating this blow off top. And so this is what we're going to find out here, because again, we're not going to hang out here in purgatory forever. Bitcoin's going to do something and then altcoins like XRP will ultimately respond. And even if XRP legs behind Bitcoin in terms of parabolic movement, which historically it certainly has, and that's fine by me. Uh, cool. But we're going to find out very soon, aren't we? It's going to move, big move to the upside or big move to the downside. It can't stay here forever. That's that's what I believe. And really everybody believes, even like blockchain back or credible crypto, they have like different ideas of what directionally what that's going to mean. But they all believe something is going to happen. There will be a big move. Just a matter of time. And I'm just as curious as you. I'm optimistic for the upside, but we shall see. <laughs> now take a look at this, because <clears throat> how has everybody been behaving while well, uh, you know, the typical retail speculators have been freaking out, losing their ever-loving minds for much of the last several months or so. Look at this headline from the Daily Hoddle. Confident crypto whales behind Bitcoin explosion, according to analyst Nicholas Merton. A popular crypto analyst is identifying big players in the crypto world as likely being responsible for the market's recent rip to the upside. In a new strategy session, Nicholas Merton tells his 514,000... Uh, 514, uh, 100,000 YouTube subscribers um, that uh, whales and other institutional investors not selling their Bitcoin despite macroeconomic and geopolitical uncertainty is the catalyst behind Bitcoin's sudden rise in price. And here's a quote from him. Over the past couple months, there's been so many scares around the macro environment, the Federal Reserve increasing interest rates and initiating quantitative tightening to curb inflation the war going on between Ukraine and Russia, potentially another COVID wave. All these different topics that got all these people pessimistic made people think that the whales, the large investors, the institutions were going to sell their positions. 
On the contrary, we didn't see any major whales dumping. In fact, we saw accumulators continue to either buy more or hold. That is proven here through the one-year hodl wave, end quote. And it's worth pointing out, as I've done in the past, this is not the behavior from whales that we saw in the early part of 2018. Markets got very crashy-crashy very quickly. We're not seeing the same behavior here. And you could argue perhaps it's because market cycles are lengthening, and that's, I think, provably the case at this point. Because we're not in a, well, we haven't seen a, like some crazy crash from Bitcoin, and we also haven't seen an alt season. So I think it's pretty clear that, you know, what we're looking at here, unless the structure's really completely broken, uh, fine, fine, then okay. But if it's not, then we're just seeing a lengthening market cycle here. Anyway, peace continues. The one-year hodl wave metric keeps track of Bitcoin that has remained dormant for over a year. The Data Dash host goes on to explain that the whales have been loading their crypto bags over the last six months while short-term and leveraged traders have caused the up and down price action. Here's another quote from Nicholas Burton. We saw during this time a nearly 10% increase from back in September and October of 2021, all the way towards where we are here at the end of March. It's been nothing but a couple of months of the whales buying more and holding their positions. All the volatility we've been seeing in the market is likely short-term traders and leveraged traders getting liquidated in either direction, end quote. Yeah, I would buy that. And you know what? That, that, and he's talking about a shorter time period here, but I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, no, so he, he seems to get that. Like, this doesn't matter. What matters is overall adoption and the trend upward, which we've been seeing for over a decade in crypto, right? And so that's why for me, like ever since the bubble popped, the XRP bubble popped, the Bitcoin bubble popped, the last market cycle, late 2017, early 2018, I just, anything that's happened since then to this point, as volatile as it's been with XRP being as low as 11 cents all the way up to $2 last year, as volatile as it is in so many uh, peaks and valleys in between, I must insist that, and this is my very firm and strong opinion, none of that matters. It feels scary and volatile and intense, and oh my God, at any moment, it could all just go to there. It's what it feels like to people. I get that. It feels, you know. None of it freaking matters. I really believe that. We'll see if I'm right, but I really don't believe that it's going to matter in the end. Because the bet is either, for me, is it either goes, like I said earlier at the beginning part of the video, either it goes parabolic, goes to the moon, or it goes to zero. One of those things is going to happen. So all the crap in between, who gives a damn? It's not worth feeling emotions because of any of that. I'm waiting for one of those to play out. And I'm here for the long haul. I will be here when one of those plays out. Period. That's it. That's my bet. Either I lose everything or it becomes worth a fortune. There's really not any in between for me. Because I'm just not going to panic sell. I'm just, I'm not going to do it. Um, but anyway, Merton concludes his analysis by reasserting his long-held opinion that despite Bitcoin's 50% decline from an all-time high above $69,000 back in November, uh, Bitcoin is not in a bear market. And here's a final quote from him. These trends are driven by supply contractions. When we see those higher lows in price like we've been seeing over the past year, year and a half, it's a sign that the trend is not dead and that this isn't a bear market, plain and simple. End quote. And so... Uh, that is what I'm seeing from every analyst on the planet that I follow, except for the blockchain backer. But uh, blockchain backer is right an insane amount of times. He's way more correct than wrong. So I am not, I'm not, despite him having the minority opinion, clearly, uh, I'm not throwing it out. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's earned his position, let's say. So, um, and even if he is wrong, it, it, whatever. He, he's right on, on almost everything. So I just, I don't even care. Like, <laughs> Fine, fine, you could argue this is like a more consequential thing to, you know, put a stake in the ground on. But but even so, it, it is what it is. So we're going to find out soon, folks. Super exciting times. Keep hanging out. Just I, I'm telling I really firmly believe the best is yet to come. And even after that happens, you know, the altcoin season, uh, once things crash, that's the time that, that it won't be as exciting. But that's the most important time to pay attention because that's when everything's going to be on sale again. And depending on how the market's behaving, if we see any sort of a notable maturation and maybe the market, if, it de if, if crypto starts to decouple, like all these things will be factors for me personally in determining whether or not I'm going to change my buying and holding strategy with specific cryptos. Because right now, everything just moves in tandem, so I just don't give a damn. Like right now, I own Ethereum Classic, arguably the worst crypto on the entire freaking planet. And I say that knowing that there are scam coins out there. 
So I'm just I'm just saying, you know, if people start to actually get interested in real world utilities, so on and so forth, then eh, yeah, I might reevaluate my position. But even so, there's going to be so much opportunity in the bear market. And I can't wait for that. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.